Hey everybody. Uh, before we get started today, I just wanted to say thank you for last week's comments. Um, I'm still kind of going through it, but it was so nice connecting with a bunch of you. Um, I connected with a few, few of you over email. I'm going to get back to you. I got a bunch of really nice emails that I just haven't had time to get back to because I've been in and out of doctors and stuff. So anyway, neither here nor there. We're still in the shop. We're still making stuff. Today we're going to make this cool lighter case. Kaylina designed this and it's like, I, I, I'm not going to, it's not origami, but it's a folded lighter case that hangs upside down and you keep the lighter in it. It's just very cool. And she passed on the drawing to me. I got it up, mocked up in the computer and we're gonna have the pattern is gonna be like two bucks on the website. If you wanna make a long, you can bang these out really fast and they're really, really nice. So let's get into it. So um, the pattern, I'm gonna face this towards you. If it looks like that, it's going to be for a right-handed person, and if you make it like that, it's going to be for a left-handed person, and that took me an embarrassing amount of time to figure out. <laughs> so the sample, you can see it's a little crooked, but the sample we made for left-handed people, I accidentally made because I'm right-handed, but um, there's a notch right here, and that's for you to be able to use the lighter. So basically, um, you want to make sure that you're making it for the right, you're making it the right way for whoever you're making it for. So. I have mine marked on the pattern, it's going to be marked on the right hand side, and if you want it for a left handed, you obviously you just flip it over, you're good to go. So it's pretty simple, I'm just going to get this all traced out, and then we'll get into the cutting and the assembly part, which is only one tiny stitch line and a couple snaps. So this pattern is a little, it's not super hard to cut out, but it is like, you know, one giant piece with a lot of intricate little curves and stuff. The only thing that I would recommend at this right angle, you've seen me do this plenty of times, is I'm going to take a little hole punch. This is 530 seconds, but any size will do. And I'm gonna punch a hole right in this corner. I wouldn't usually suggest punching into your nice cutting pad. Try to use a pounding board, but every once in a while we all do it. Um, the reason I'm gonna do that is because for right angles, I like to do that instead of cutting because it's really impossible to cut a right angle where you don't overlap at least like a little bit. So you see how there's that overlap there? And then over time, that it's possible for that to, you know, rip and tear and stuff. So by doing the little circle cut, now we can just cut straight lines from that. And we've essentially created just a little tiny curve that we could never cut by hand. And then with also with this pattern, there's a lot of little notches. I'm going to cut all these straight first, and then you can either cut them out by hand or you can use a three quarter inch strap end punch and then just round off the edges. You can do that as well. All right, so actually I'll show you what I mean. Um, so this is a three quarter inch belt, a strap end punch. And this is, I don't think you can see it on the camera. So I'm cutting out this curve. Now this curve is, we're cutting that curve so that we can fit a wide array of, a wide array of hardware here. You have your choice. You can put whatever you want here. You could do a spring clip, you could do a split ring, you could do a carabiner, whatever. But this is an inch wide, and that's kind of wide. It's the hardware gets really bulky at an inch, so I made it so this fits like five eighths to three quarter inch, which is a little bit more standard and a little more appropriately sized for this little tiny leather piece. So if you want to do it with the belt end punch to get really nice clean curves, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna line it up with your the line that you scribed. We're going to cut that. We're going to go in with our knife and just round that over. See? And that way, if you're not super good at cutting curves, you can at least get the bulk of your curve done. And then we have our nice curve there, but we don't have to worry about cutting the whole curve. If you're a little more advanced and you have a little more knife skill, oh, a few more knife skills, um, these are super mellow curves to just cut too. It's also a good pattern if you're trying to practice your cur your curve cutting. This is a really good pattern to practice on um, because they are fairly simple curves to cut in. And so it'll give you some practice. And if you don't do it perfect, you can always go in and just kind of clean them up a little bit with a sandpaper with sandpaper or a punch or something like that as well. Okay. So I picked up um, a new one inch Master Tools strap and punch that I was all excited about to use. But I lied, Kaylina designs on paper, not on the computer. <laughs> so this isn't an inch, it's like an inch and three-eighths-ish, inch and a quarter. 
So an inch and a quarter punch should do. An inch and a half punch definitely will work, but I'm just gonna cut it by hand. It's just going by big measurements, man. Hey, you go with the flow. And that's why you make up these like super organic, beautiful foldy pieces that I don't because I design mostly on a computer. There we go. All right, so assembling this, pretty easy. Um, you can burnish everything. I'm not gonna bore you guys with burnishing this entire piece. You've seen me burnish this things plenty. Um, the first thing that we're gonna do is we need to attach and do our single stitch line for whatever you're gonna use. Like I said, be it a split ring, a clip, anything. How I like to do this is I'm just gonna take a little bit of double stick tape. That's a little too long, but that's okay. And we're gonna put it right there. You can use glue too if you want. I'm gonna nip this off. Right there. So we'll get that super stuck and then lift that up. And this, you can kind of, there's no real exact point to stitch this. It's all gonna depend on like the thickness of what you're using for hardware. Um, just make sure that you're stitching below this, essentially this line, because your lighter's gonna butt right up to that. Anything you use is probably gonna be a little too small so to, to just glide onto this, so just bend it, slip it right on, and that notch, it fits right there. So now that we have our little tape there, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold this and I'm, I'm pulling the split ring so that it stays low, and I'm just gonna tape this so that this line, this lines up with the edge, this other edge here, see? There we go. Now, we're gonna go here with it. And what you can do is, I'm gonna use my ruler here, and I'm gonna go like this. And I'm just gonna move it up a little tiny bit so that hopefully, if, if I do this right, it'll be parallel to our body line here, but it won't be, it'll be a little bit lower. Yeah, that's good enough. And then, I think this fits a six tooth perfectly. Yeah, so this is the this is a six prong five millimeter from Weaver, and it fits this perfect. That's, I forgot, that's why we did the little over an inch. Now we just have to stitch it. <laughs> <laughs> now we just have to stitch this up. So this stitch line is just long enough where I would kind of normally just do a regular three stitch back stitch, but it's short enough where I think it would look better if I back stitched the whole thing and just did a double stitch the whole way. So you guys don't have to back stitch the entire thing for strength. I'm just doing it for aesthetics. Um, but that way at least like the whole thing will be double stitched. Because otherwise, here I'll show you. I would normally do three back stitches. That just looks really uneven. So it's only two more to make it all even out. The last step, um, so I set just our normal, just a normal brass snap on this side. You can use line 20s, line 24s, glove snaps, whatever you want. Um, I'm gonna punch the holes. So this snap kind of holds the rest of it together. So it's pretty unique and it's actually really cool, but this can be a little bit difficult to set. So I've found that stitching this first works best. Um, if you wanna do it a different way, go for it. The way that I set this is, I'm going to use a manual snap set. I'm not going to use the little wonder um, because what we're going to do is I'm going to fold this down, wrap this around. And I apologize in advance if my hands get in the way. I'll do my best to show you everything here. So we're going to put, this is our male end of the snap. We have, no, yep, male end. We have our female end here. We're going to put the post in here. We're going to wrap this around and get it through this hole like that. Here's the kind of tricky part. You gotta find something that you can hammer on that fits in this gap. I have my trusty hammer that I'm gonna slide in. And then we wanna make sure that this seam, let me see if I can find something to point with. In this pattern, just make sure that these two pieces are running in parallel and you should be good to go. Now, all that's left. You're welcome, everybody. 
Yeah. <laughs> I promise it's worth it though. This is a sick design, but this is a little confusing. Now I'm just using, uh, if you've never used a manual snap setter before, um, it's just, you just tap it with a mall. It's not hard. Um, but I like to kind of hold down the piece, the top part of the snap. And this does feel extremely unnatural and awkward. So no matter what you're hammering, it's going to feel a little weird. There we go. And here we go. So we are actually done. So now what we have to do is we're going to take our little tab here. We're going to put it through. And now I already tried this once. Like I said, this is a new pattern and it was kind of hard to draw up. So this, in the one that I'm making, this is about a quarter inch short. In the pattern that will be downloaded, that you'll download if you buy it, I'm going to just extend this a quarter inch. But you take your lighter, you put it in like that, and then you just close it. And you see, it's just a little tiny bit too short. I'll fix that in the pattern. And then you have a lighter that you can hang upside down from anything, but it's nice and secure. And the thing that I like about it is you open it, you use it, you have your thumb notch, and when you want to like switch it out, you just pull it up. How crazy is that? It's so cool. It's so simple, but it's so cool. So that's it. That's simple lighter case. These make great gifts. They make great things for craft fairs. You know, we've, I've really been on a kick lately of just nice, simple projects that you can make out of scrap. You can make really quickly. Um, but this one is really, really neat. So thank you guys so much again for the support in the last video. And um, thank, you, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.